What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Person. My name is Chris, and with me is my man, Jesse. How you doing? We're here today to bring you some special stuff. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Marvel's Luke Cage on Netflix. This was an amazing series, and Jesse and I just had to bring you a video about it. So we're going to do our famous recap, review, and react. No, react, re whatever. Okay, so... The thing that's on our banner. Yeah, whatever the hell's on our banner. All right, guys, so this is the third property, the third IP, the third character that Marvel has brought to Netflix. And we've the first one was Daredevil, second one was Jessica Jones, and then now we have Luke Cage. And in the very near future, we're getting Iron Fist, and then we're going to get the Defenders, which kind of brings them all together. Um, and then later on, seasons three of Daredevil and season two of Jessica Jones. So we're looking forward to that. But right now we're, we're into Marvel's Luke Cage. And I just want to start out by saying, I, I, I didn't know what to expect from this, Jess. I thought, I thought like, nobody did, you know, I, I, um, I, there were some people that I know had high hopes and then got a little bit let down for whatever reason. But I really went into this with just, I don't know much about the character. I did my research, you know, I went on yeah. I, online and I checked out, you know, just to get familiar with them with the characters and, and some of the storyline. And then I, yeah, I didn't really have, I didn't really, you know, I just wanted it to be good. I just didn't know. I didn't know because Luke Cage as a character is kind of boring. If you think about it, he's just, he's power man. He's just yeah. got, he's strong. He can heal and he's got bulletproof skin, you know, uh, impenetrable skin. So it's like by uh, certain bullets. Well, 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 that's what we find out. But on yeah. the on the uh, at the onset it's like well what does this guy do what does he got you know so so this is a character that they have to bring like heart to now so if he's just this guy that can't be hurt ever generally they got to do something right so of course um so let's go i mean i'll go i'll start and i'll say i i liked i really i did enjoy this series i really enjoyed this series um i did think it was the weakest though to date not to say it yeah, wasn't good, it, yeah. but if you compare to Daredevil or Jessica Jones, it was the weakest, but it has a lot going for it. Uh, yeah. what, what, what's, what's your take on it? Uh, I definitely liked it. I knew a little bit more probably than you about Luke Cage because I did read a few of his comics when I was younger. Okay. And that's not saying much because I'm still young. But <laughs> uh, works. I knew he had some catch to him, but I didn't expect them to make him as good as they did just the overall acting and all that it made this whole show worth watching yeah absolutely Abs i mean i i agree and we're gonna get into that so why don't we just get into that let's do this we're gonna do a spoiler free section and then we're gonna do a spoiler filled section so let's start off with the spoiler free section and we'll just give a um, a brief overview of the entire series up to this point this takes place in harlem it's after season one of uh, Jessica Jones and season two of Daredevil. So yeah. we saw what happened at the end of season one of Jessica Jones where his bar blows up. And, you know, I, I'm not exactly, I don't really remember how it ended with them. I guess they were on friendly terms, right? Uh, well, the last thing we got to see of him there was uh, him starting to recover from the shotgun, I thought. Oh, because that was at the end, right? When 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 she yeah. did that, yeah. Okay, so maybe they're not friends at this point. But I, I don't think they were on speaking terms. All right. So so after that, so after that, and then his bar blows up thanks to Jessica, and he. This is five months later, um, but this the events of season two of Daredevil with the Punisher already happened. So this is all happening in chronological order. So Jessica Jessica Jones happens between season one and two of Daredevil, and then you know whatever. So. In this, he's in Harlem. He's working for a man named Pop in a barber shop. He's also moonlighting as a as a dishwasher in Harlem's biggest, you know, club called Harlem Renaissance, and that is where Cottonmouth, the 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 first villain that we get in the series, that's his club. He's a gun runner, a drug runner. He's a big baddie, you know. But he's you know Harlem is his, and his cousin is a councilwoman. Her name is Mariah Dillard. Her, she's referred to as Black Mariah in the comic mostly, and once I think once in this uh, in the in this show, and so they kind of like between them those two cousins they kind of run the city, and Luke kind of gets drawn into um, what happens, and he ends up you know things happen that um, 
some you know tragic things happen to him and he ends up being called to service basically and he's like i'm the one that has to clean these streets so we have we have the first whole the whole first half of the series he's or this season he cleans up the streets and it's pretty dope and it's pretty cool he he does his you know he's out there being power man and everyone is beginning to know him as luke cage and everything and then they and then you know it hits a it hits a boiling point it boils over and then it switches over it switches gears halfway through the season and then we get another villain and then you know and that's not really too spoilery it's just it is what yeah. it is but you know and then it goes and then it goes to there and then it, it, it plays out so um i mean that's the overall gist of the season i mean i don't want to give too much away because we have a lot to talk about and we're going to do that in in spoiler free but i mean it's in spoiler filled but you know it it there's there's there are some cool fight scenes there's there's a lot of cool dialogue there's a, there's a lot of cool references um what i mean what else is there that we can throw in here that's spoiler wow. free but still a review spoiler free just to listen to the music and look at the situations alone you're going to want to watch this show oh good point the, uh, the, yeah. yeah the music is on point in every scene you got um, a mixture of like old school jazz and you got classical and then you get uh, newer some, like some rap in contemporary yeah. jazz and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it's all good music Yeah, performed by most of it live artists. There was basically uh, it was like it was like a it was a guest. It was like a guest artist a week, like yeah. every episode. So like every episode had a had a guest artist. Yeah, you have like uh, Raphael Sadek uh, from The Roots mm -hmm. in the first episode even. Right. And if you're a fan of anything... Faith Evans was in there. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a fan of anything that's decent, you will listen to this or watch this show just for the music yeah, it, and the story. Very well. So so the music played a huge part in, and um, literally in the middle of really cool scenes and situations yes. happening, they had this music running and then you'd cut to the music. And um, I mean, it got a little... It, it t Towards the, the middle-ish, it was like, you know, after third, three quarters of the way through, you're like, all right, we get it. Can we just get to where we need to get now? You know, like it was great yeah, up to a point, and it's like that can was we... their way of doing the you know, the big Jessica Jones moments or something like when she's, uh, seeing stuff happen and all sorts yeah, of stuff like yeah, that with Kilgrave. Yeah. But this is Luke Cage's version of it. it you know, it gives you backstory without giving you backstory. Right, and they and they really they this show it really tried to put forth a vision of Harlem in that they threw it old school. Like, like this is old Harlem. This is old school Harlem. We're bringing it back. We're, and they really played it up. They really played up the old school Harlem. Um, it's not like they made it like it, there's you know, no bad things happen there or anything yeah. like that. Like it's, 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 you know, a wonderful city to live in type of thing. Like they, it was the real Harlem, but they, but they really tried to, the creators really tried to, emphasize the like like the name of the club is harlem renaissance and that's what they tried to yeah. do they tried or to harlem's paradise harlem's paradise i'm sorry i misquoted that twice now um harlem's paradise but it was the, it was the, they referred to harlem's renaissance many times that's why i think it's in my head and that's the whole point they're like that was the point and, and that's what they did in the show and they did they did a really fine job doing that um really interesting moments happen like there's some really really cool moments story-wise like situational in the in the in the in each of these episodes and i think um i think it flowed pretty well the the like i said the first half was up to a certain point and the second half was was you know not so much an epilogue but like another section of it you know i will say i enjoyed the first half better than the second half to be honest with you um yeah i thought the threats okay not so much the threats but the the way the Luke, build up the yeah the way luke went about his business in the first half as compared to the second half yeah. um yeah the second half was 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 the weaker half and kind of just kind of was all over the place and kind of fell apart in in places mainly due to the to the to the one character you know who we'll talk about later yeah. um but still worth it like i mean you're invested at that point and it's like you know let's just Big go time. but the first half leading up was really good and then you know, so um, is that it for spoilers? Uh, spoiler free? I mean, there's really not much you can talk about. Um, yeah, not without throwing in spoilers. Um, 
we've covered Harlem, we've covered the music, we've yeah, covered right. uh, more or less everything we need. I mean, the fight scenes is all we have left to talk about. That's spoiler free. But, uh. I mean, yeah. If you want, we can talk about yeah. those fight scenes. You want? Let's let's talk about the fight scenes. It's that's that's pretty spoiler free. It's yeah. um okay. So, this the fight scenes were were not the greatest though. I'm gonna say there were one or two in there that were pretty pretty cool, and you know we'll 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 get into that in spoiler in a spoiler field. But there were there were some there were one or two really cool fight scenes. The action, some of the outside action of outside of fight scenes was pretty cool. The yeah. effects were really cool. Nothing fantastical happening in here. Just a lot of power type stuff where guys are getting thrown through walls. Cars are getting moved. Things are getting broken. You're shot Doors up. Doors ripped off. Doors ripped off. So, um, but, the, but honestly, the fight scenes were a little weak. There are moments in here where Luke goes against, and you've seen it in the trails. It's not really spoiler um, territory, but there are scenes in the, in the trailers that you see where he's fighting like a, a, just a buttload of guys. Yeah. And those were fun, but there might have been just one too many of those. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and what I mean by saying that they're, they weren't like the best fight scenes, like there really isn't much you can do. I'm sorry, I'll take that back. They're, they could have done more, been a little more creative in the fight scenes. I mean, you have, you have like Daredevil, which is just phenomenal. Like even the quick little fights he does, they're just phenomenal. I mean, each, yeah. each season of Daredevil had those... had. You know, we had the hallway scene in season one and we had the stairwell scene in season two. Just amazing fight scenes, you know, choreographed yeah. fight scenes. And all this other stuff is pretty cool, too. Even just fighting one or two guys, he's flipping around, bouncing off shit, like, you know. Well, Mike Coulter is a bigger guy and so is Luke Cage. So uh, you, you can't expect him to be, like, super energetic. And his thing is he's the big, tough tank. Right. So he's going to go in there and he's going to bash a few skulls in. And he's not about killing people necessarily. He's about right, he doesn't um, kill, right? Yeah, I mean, he, he's about getting them out of the way where he can get to his objective, right? And and yeah, and I agree with that. I I do think though they could have thrown a little more flair in there. They could have worn well, an, just one extra pin for that extra piece of flair on their fucking jumpsuit, you know? Um, I, I don't know if, can, uh, if it's considered a spoiler, but a couple of times in there, he picks a guy up by like the shirt and throws him into the ceiling. Oh well, there was a lot. Yeah, there was a lot. Yeah. Like he he flipped dudes around. Like oh yeah, like yeah. he was. There, that's what I'm saying. I wanted to see more of that. I wanted to see more of like a flair in there, you know, like he could have, I know he's, he's a trained boxer. Like he trained, I mean, when he was younger anyway, he trained, but it was like, you, I, I feel, I just wanted to see more of that, you know, like knock a guy's leg out and then yeah. throw him on something, you know, like just something a little extra, but all in all, it, I mean, the action was good. Don't get me wrong. It was still good, but I think it could have been Love just, it, it could have, they could have turned it up a notch and I, and I hope they do so. Um, later so all right i think i think that's good i, I think i yeah. think we're out of we're, we're let's get into let's get into some spoiler territory here why not so yeah. so spoilers from here on out spoiler 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 so if you haven't if you haven't watched or finished it then pause this video and come back to it later uh okay so we talked about the storyline we're not going to go into that again that's basic story um a little more specific is is that like i said the first half is all about cottonmouth so yes um he has he fights Cottonmouth and and Mariah you know Black Mariah he fights her too yeah. you know you know by breaking down by going into um uh what was it, is it what's it called Chris Atticus Crispic Atticus uh, Crispus Attics Crispus Attics okay so he goes into there and he you know that's one of the scenes that we see in the trailer too where he takes the door the car door and he bunt, runs in and he fucking fucks everyone. That up. was a great scene. That actually. was a, that was a really cool scene and 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 for for that I did but then like I said later on. He does it again a couple times, and it's just kind of like, eh, okay. Yeah, I, I like specifically the part where, I don't know if that was in this one or if it was the nightclub scene where he takes the guy and throws him up, and also like when he folds the guy in the car door like a taco. Oh, yeah, <laughs> after he was like, he had to get by him, and he folds him with the, t yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just like, come here. Yeah, a lot of a lot of cool a lot of cool stuff happening in there with that, with those type of things. Um, and then the second half, he ends up fighting... Diamondback. So in this story, Cottonmouth is his Cottonmouth's handler is a guy named Diamondback, and it's where he's getting all of uh, Arnie Hammer's weapons. Yeah. And he and and so Diamondback's getting these weapons. Now Arnie Hammer is um, an Iron Man villain who in Iron Man Two tried to like you know outbid Tony Stark on on the tech, and he tried to beat him to market with some tech and everything. And he's so he's an arms he's an arms tech guy who you know ends up losing 
in uh, you know in, in Iron Man three, he's in jail with the Mandarin and stuff like that. But he still actually has his you know whatever he's got his company and stuff. So, um, so there's these. So Hammer is uh, that word is, you know that name is thrown around a lot in yeah. the series. Uh, uh, because I believe of, his name is Justin Hammer. By is the way, is it Justin? Why am I saying Arnie Hammer then? Uh, because Army Hammer, A R M I E, is an actor. is in the third Iron Man. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that wow. might be what you're thinking of. Well, my references are just all over the place. He's gonna eat yeah, me yeah. up in the comments. Uh, that's fine. He's played by comments. Sam Rockwell. Well, though, yeah. Well, so. that's yeah. Obviously, yeah. yeah. So Sam Rockwell's uh, he's a cool dude. And um, all right, so Justin Hammer. Okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah I just, maybe Justin I just like I don't like J Justin Hammer. Sounds dumb. It, it does sound dumb. I like but... Army Hammer better. Arm and Hammer. Yeah, that, that's probably what you're thinking of. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Hammer, his weapons are in there, so Cottonmouth is trying to get, you know, Diamondbacks get supplying him, and then, and what happens, yeah. what, what sets everything off is that um, one of the, uh, the, the, how he meets Misty and everything is that one of Cottonmouth's employees infiltrates, he gets him and some of his friends to rob the, the deal going down between Diamondback and oh not diamondback um diamondback's guns given to cottonmouth he's trying to sell them to this uh latino gang yeah and i can't we, think of his name yeah um, uh, I'm, we, we, we'll, we'll get his name but so he's so he's so that's what ha that's what's happening there that gets all blown out of the water when this guy um uh chico was his what was his name uh chico was the uh like half hispanic guy yeah he was um, he was he was with the deal so that, it was it was uh oh dante i think his name was dante was the guy that worked at harlem paradise harlem's paradise yeah, i think so he's yeah. the one that 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 told uh his friend chico and this other kid to go in and, and you know yeah. get the you know they're gonna steal the money and they didn't even take the guns or anything so when they end up doing that it it, it screws up the whole thing everyone's like gets shot um chico's the only one that gets away and so there's like this hunt for Chico throughout the first half of the season. And they kind of, um, you know, this is also where Luke meets Misty for the first time in the club. And uh, right away they go and, you know, they have sex and, you know, that's how they get to know each other and finds out that she's a cop. And then he, she ends up finding out that he's bulletproof and it just, it goes into this, this, yeah. that, that gets all played in. So, so like I said, for the whole first half of the season, you have Arnie, why, why was I saying Arnie again? You have Justin. Justin, but I didn't want to say that though. You have Luke going after Cottonmouth to clean up the streets, and I'm not going to go into too much detail about it because it just is what it is. But yeah. that's the whole first half, and I just thought they did it so well. I just, I really enjoyed the buildup. I enjoyed him taking these sections of the city down, of the, of, of the, you know, of, of Harlem down, like all the, you know, like I said, yeah. Christmas Atticus he went, Attics he went to, Attic whatever he, um, he, he. And he grabbed all the money. Then the cops got that money. It was it was a really cool section. And then you get to the second section, after Cottonmouth is brutally murdered by his cousin Black yeah. Mariah, she she lays waste to him. Diamondback comes in, and he kind of takes over. And Diamondback is his motivations are kind of all, all over the place. He's well, he has the, one sole motivation really, and it's to kill Luke Cage. Yeah, yeah. it's to kill Luke Cage. Um. In the comic, I believe it was over a love interest. In this, it was the love of their father. Well, so, he was always jealous of Luke right, in but the comics, that's yeah, yeah. But no, I I think it was because it was a, of a love interest, and and they weren't I brothers. So. In the, so in the show, they made them half brothers. That his father yeah. slept with the secretary, and um, Diamondback, whose real name is Willis Stryker, which yeah. is like the third incarnation of Stryker in Marvel. I think <laughs> you have Stryker. You have Willis Stryker, Diamondback. Then you have Stryker, um, who created Wolverine, working in Project yeah. X, right? And I think there actually was another Stryker. I um, think so. But there's, anyway, there's a lot of Strikers yeah. in Marvel. Anyway, so they just like the name Stryker. So, yeah. so his name is Willis Stryker. His, his, you know, his mother sleeps with Luke Cage's father, and like two years after Willis is born, um, his mother, who was previously unable to have children gives birth to Lucas. And now, yeah. so Willis is like, you know, so basically always like fighting for uh, affection of their father. Meanwhile, the dad didn't like either of them. So, you know, so he thinks, oh, dad liked you better and stuff. So, so they grew yeah. up together. They grew up as brothers. Um, in the comic, they're, they're just friends, 
you know, um, and, and it was a whole, there's, they changed the backstory a little bit. Like in, in the comic, he grew up in Harlem and was in gangs and everything like that. In the show, he didn't grow up in Harlem. He was a cop in Georgia and, Di- and Diamondback framed him. It's the same deal. Diamondback framed yeah. him in the comics and in here and sent him to jail. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But um, Diamondback himself was just, eh. he was just erratic. He was crazy. He was, you know, I- good actor. But waste of talent. A waste of talent, and I, I, I did though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna say I did believe that he was more maniacal. Like he was scarier than Cottonmouth, who I call yeah. Cotton Balls, because he was weak. He was a bitch. Great actor. Great, great character. Like great acting. Like nothing. I don't. I'm specifically talking about the character himself. Is a bitch. He was yeah. such a bitch, and he was all about ego and all wanted to do this. Um, yeah, I, I well, like you can see why uh, Cottonmouth was, though, because he never really wanted to be any of this. He, right. he wanted to be a pianist and yeah. um, do something with his life. But it's the situation he was raised in. You know what? Why don't we since we're doing that? Let's just jump into characters. Let's just jump into a little section of characters where. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about Cottonmouth. We'll get to Luke in a second. So since we're on Cottonmouth, let's just get into Cottonmouth. We'll do it out of order. Right. So no. yeah, Cottonmouth was you find out that they're cut um Mariah and Will and um uh his name was uh not Clarence. Um not Curtis. Oh crap, why didn't I write it down? Cornell. Who are you talking about? Cornell. Yeah, Cornell. Cottonmouth's name is Cornell. Him and his cousin Mariah live with their aunt and uncle, and they the aunt basically ran Harlem and was like the crime the crime lord of yeah. um Harlem. And she sent Mariah to school, like let Mariah go get the degrees and stuff. And she becomes a, a councilwoman, but she made Cornell into cotton. He, they always called him Cottonmouth. So you have, you have Cottonmouth, Cornell, Pop, and um, uh, an, the, another dude who I forget the name of. He's not really that important. He doesn't really show up that much. Those were the three guys um, that kind of like ran Harlem when they were in their like early, late Well, teens it was um, Chico's father. Chico's father, right. Okay. Yeah. That's that's the only thing we need to know. Um, so Cottonmouth, but he yeah he was he's he was really good at piano and he wanted to be a, a pianist and his uncle had you know bought him lessons and stuff and he wanted him to not be a um, a gangbanger or a gun runner or or yeah. in crime. But Mariah, um, uh, their aunt, who I can't remember her name, she she was an unimportant character. Yeah, me. you know they they you know but so their aunt was. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say she's unimportant. Well. But, her you know, name wasn't important to me. She has, I, I she, has a, as... she has a role to play, like you said. Yeah. Turn turn Cottonmouth into a criminal, and so yeah, so he's a reluctant criminal, and you know, but it was all ego driven with him. There wasn't any real. It was it was all about money and stuff. So there's some cool scenes between him and his cousin, um, you know, Mariah, uh, based on those particular things. Um, uh, Mama Mabel, by the way. Mama Mabel, thank you. Okay, yeah. so. So, yeah, so, I mean, that's Cottonmouth. So, yeah, so he's the reluctant guy. But, again, I didn't think he was a very character, character-wise, character he was a bitch, you know? Yeah. Acting-wise, he was, you know, it's, it, I haven't watched. But it's understandable. So, yeah, he, a good overall character in the sense that you can see where he goes yeah, and yeah, why yeah. he goes there. Yeah. But, yeah, his character was kind of portrayed yeah, he was a, he was a bitch. He was a bitch, and, you know, so. Um, a great actor. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Every, everyone acted the shit out of this show and that's Just what phenomenal yeah they yeah. every it was cast great it was that's what you know so i mean let's jump to luke all right so uh mike coulter you know in jessica jones we he didn't really get to do much he didn't really get to act yeah. now he's been in a bunch of shit this dude i've seen him in a yeah, bunch of other yeah. shit i'm not gonna go into what he's been in but he really pulled this shit off he definitely had the chops to to bring that heart to the character very reluctant and you know what Jess? i don't i didn't feel most times when you have a reluctant hero you're like oh my god stop fucking whining you know i didn't feel that at all i didn't feel that no man i liked it i i I thought it was i thought it was pretty good no i'm sorry i thought it was more than pretty good it was i I thought it was great when he was on screen even if he was being a reluctant hero he was bringing the emotion and the total tone to the yeah. scene. Yeah, he looked uh, the You part, can feel when right. he's angry and you can feel when he's uh, feeling remorse about something yeah. in the scenes. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, so he definitely looks the part, played the part well. Um, his motivations, you know, his whole world gets turned upside down after he finds out, you know, that, you know, 
he was kind of played, you know, his wife, Reba. Yeah. Now, I didn't even know that they didn't even mention it, that he got married to her in this. They didn't, they didn't really uh, mention that, but I obviously, in this it was one, her. they didn't, but in Jessica, but Jones, obviously, yeah, cause Jessica Jones kills her, ends up, she, she's the one that killed her. And I don't remember all that either, but well, let's go back and watch she, that. It's but. something along the lines of, uh, he mentions the, yeah, that's my wife. And actually he does mention it when, um, Knight pulls the picture out. Right. And yeah. It's like, that's my property. That's my wife or something like right, that. Right. Yeah. But we don't, but okay. So she helps him escape basically. And they yeah. end up, I guess, getting married and they, whatever, for a little while or whatever the fuck. And then, you know, that stuff happens. So, um, so really his motivations, he just wants to keep Harlem safe and, and he's yeah. a very reluctant hero. And we got a bunch of throwbacks to when we got a bunch of throwbacks to him being a hero for hire. Like, yeah. Yeah. The the first time the first time she he saves the what you call it his landlord she's yeah. like we want to hire you and he's like no nah, I don't do that and then so it's been thrown out there was a few instances where you know the hero for hire thing so right now he's not a hero I for hire I believe Pop even says it at one Pop point Pop said you should do that and he's like no nah, I don't do that for money you know I don't want to be a hero blah 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 yeah, yeah. so um, let's let's jump into Pop real quick so. Again, I mentioned it earlier, Pop, Cottonmouth, Chico's dad, don't remember his name. He, they all kind of ran the, the streets. Pop got his name because um, he would beat the crap out of people. And the, the yeah, pops, the sound his fist made. snap, crackle was like what, what the sound his fist would make when punching people and stuff. So, yeah. um, so he was a pretty much a douchebag growing up. But then he, he turned around and decided he wanted to you know, make his place. He, he started the barber shop and he... Try to make his place a you know safe haven for like he called it Switzerland in Harlem and everyone yeah. knew even Ma, even even um, uh, Mabel knew. Yeah, don't Pop's, don't screw with that. Pop's barbershop is Switzerland. We, you know, we parlay there. We don't do anything. You know, we just you have a good time there. You don't you know, yeah. um, and that was pretty cool. Um, another character in Pop's shop is Bobby Fish, who plays a role in the in the in the show, helping out Luke re reestablish the uh the shop after pop gets killed which is kind of uh kind of bad because and this isn't even like walking dead or anything but pop being the moral center there for luke for a little bit he gets killed and now bobby's kind of being that role so yeah yeah and um but i like that it didn't he didn't immediately become like his mentor yeah. he was like he uh, Bobby Fish was a bad dude. He's like, I've robbed a few banks in my time, so you ain't gonna yeah. hear shit from me. He said, you know, like when after he gets that money out of Mariah's office, uh, yeah. the attic place or whatever, you know, he steals he steals like a bag mil with millions of dollars in it, and that's you know, and pays yeah. off all pays off the fucking the debt, barber um, shop, the barber and, shop and shit. It was like yeah. eighty, it was like eighty thousand dollars. He said, you know, yeah. So pretty cool character. So you know, and at the end of the of the of the season he picks up uh the file so you know he plays a you know bobby fish plays an integral role in the in this series um that's it for pop we just don't really got to go too much into that we're going to try and push things along here yeah. guys so this isn't like a two-hour video in which it could be so let's move on to misty knight the first time we see misty knight is in the nightclub luke talks to her she's immediately enamored with him because she said later on in the couple later like a later episode that you know luke never always looked her in the eyes didn't look at her breasts you know yeah she was in a low-cut dress and yeah. he only ever looked me in the eyes yeah. yeah so so she's pretty cool so misty knight is a character and if you guys don't know this was um just i'm not, I'm not sure the exact date but this was created marvel created this character it's like three dudes that created this this character in this comic of um luke cage here for hire and it was in the the height of like black exploitation so it's like yeah. they created him they created misty knight who is this woman in this in this tight suit with with um a huge afro and she's got a bionic arm so misty knight in this in this series doesn't have a bionic arm but there's a throwback to that when she later on she gets shot in the arm and there's a cool he, luke what he pushes the bullet out yeah right through her arm so she's got a fucking hole in her arm and, and i'm sitting here and i'm telling my wife i'm like oh she's gonna this that's gonna lead her to her bionic arm they're gonna give her a bionic arm and then no they they didn't give her a bionic arm in fact yeah, in fact two episodes later she's literally fine and waving it around and didn't go to the hospital or anything so yeah i don't know that was kind of stupid it's like i said it kind of falls apart towards the end like that i feel like they kind of rushed it towards the end but anyway misty knight she's a badass she I think it came out in like the 70s like early 70s i think uh, like yeah like 70 maybe 72 73 something like that i think yeah um but she's a really cool character. She's a martial arts expert, a weapons expert. She's smart. Um, she's a detective. 
Um, I do know that in the comics, she hooks up with Danny Rand, Iron Fist. So yeah. I think that's what's going to happen. So it turns out she isn't the love interest. I mean, they bang in the beginning and that's it. And there's a whole running joke about coffee, how Luke Cage hates coffee. But um, he always goes for coffee. But yeah, coffee means he just wants to bang the chick. So, yeah. you know, and that's like a reference to the old pop culture, because as you say, uh, I remember uh, to bring in gaming here just a little bit. San Andreas, they'd always say, you want some coffee, hot coffee? Hot like coffee. That. And that was the whole exploit in the game where you could bang the chicken in GTA. And they, it, the, yeah. the name of the exploit was or the, it was called hot coffee. So, yeah. yeah. So that's a reference to pop culture. Yeah, good reference there. Um, yeah, so she ends up not being his love interest. Uh, but, you know, Luke actually in the comics, Luke marries Jessica Jones and has a kid with her. Yeah. So I don't know if that's going to happen at some point because... I don't know. He's kind of uh, in love with someone else right now. Yeah, so basically what ends up happening is... And we'll, I mean, we'll move on to the next character, which is uh, Claire, who is the night nurse. And this yeah. is her third appearance you yeah. know, in this in, in the series. She was obviously in Daredevil. She was in Jessica Season Jones. Season one and two. Right? And Jessica Jones. And, and Jessica Jones. Luke and Cage. now... So she's, a, she's obviously going to be... And she's going to be in season... The first season of, of Iron Fist because... At yeah. the end of the of the season, she at the end of the last episode, she pulls a little flyer, a number off a flyer for a woman who trains in martial arts, and that woman trains with uh, Danny Rand. Yeah. So we're definitely going to see. I forget the, I forget her name. So. Yeah. Uh, so much happened. It's at the. I know. I mean, you think we would be more prepared, but who gives a shit? It doesn't matter. Whatever. Go watch the show. Um. So yeah. So Claire. So she's cool. Rosario Dawson. Um. I like her. She's a cool chick. Um, she was amazing in Rent, the movie. Yeah. Um, I like her. She's cool. Great character. She's she's she does amazing work in these in these series, and and I really think she's she's she brings some heart to you know help ground these characters, which is really cool. So she and Luke Cage get uh, they they become an item. You know, they go on this trip together, and she basically saves his life. So um, what happens is. Um, he gets shot. We were talking about that a little earlier. You mentioned these bullets. and um, Judas bullets. They're called Judas bullets, and they're made from Chitari Tech from The Incident, which is, um, if, you don't, if you haven't watched any of these series, The Incident is what happened in, at the end of Avengers, the first movie, when yeah. those aliens came through a portal, and all this tech is left behind, and everyone has you know, been you know, Stark, Hammer. They've all been... Taking it, taking and it, and, it. And, and, and um, reverse engineering it and putting it into other things. So, uh, they've created these bu uh, bullets called Judas bullets, which, when fired into an object or a person, burrow into whatever it's in and then explode, creating shrapnel. Yeah. Not, not the first time we've seen bullets like that because, and I can't think of specifically when, but there are. I've seen in other media, I've seen bullets like that. That well, we've seen something like that, which is what Hammer was supposedly giving to. Um... Uh, the military and Iron, Iron Man, Man too. too. Yeah, he was creating a prototype for it when that little pin or whatever. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, it was supposed to stick to whatever and then blow up. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. But apparently so he's a... perfected it here. Okay. So yeah. So so we have a pro so that's so that's the type of thing. So what uh, what happens is Diamondback finds uh, finds Luke. Talk. You know, they're talking in the park. Clara and Luke, and then he shoots him in the stomach, and it blows up in his stomach, and then he get, and then he later on gets shot again in his shoulder. So, Claire takes him, takes him back to Georgia to to the doctor that um, actually made Luke, and um, not made him, but you know the, he was the, the experimented on Luke to make him what he is, and she right. basically saves his life. But her and the doctor end up saving his life, and um, so they so they they've got kind of gotten together since then, like you know trauma you know it's like i yeah. i i liken it to like speed with sandra bullock and keanu reeves like they um they start a relationship based on that crazy situation you know so we'll see where it goes though so i don't know i don't know we'll see where it goes um, yeah i don't know i'd like some of the references though like uh he was talking about um in the park there with diamondback and luke after the ambulance crashes he goes uh Luke come out and play like the Warriors. Yeah. And the Warriors, yeah, and he's like he's cool in the Warriors. Like you get all mad at that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of cool a lot of uh, cool little references. Um so let's 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 move on to to Diamondback himself then since we're since we talked about him. So uh yeah. we talked about him a little bit, you know, uh Willis Stryker, he's pissed off that daddy liked like Luke better. 
which he didn't. Whatever. Like it's such a it's su right there. His motivation is is still just like, and he's always quoting the Bible because his dad was a preacher. Um, you know, so it's like that motivation alone is like, uh, and they make him crazy. He's he's fucking nuts. Legit crazy. Yeah, yeah. he's like he's out of his fucking gourd, but. That's, His sole thing is to kill Luke. Yeah, he just only wants to kill Luke. But it's still it's still more than Cotton Balls. You know, like, Cotton Balls yeah. is such a bitch. He didn't, he just, you know, he's all about money and stuff. And this guy's like, I'll fucking shoot everybody. He comes in. So, um, at one point, um, Mariah Dillard sets up. After after uh, she kills her cousin, Cotton, Cotton Balls. She goes to Domingo. Domingo, that, that's, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that was the, 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 the Spanish dude for the... the gang he she goes there to, and she says get all the crime bosses and you know and we want i want to set up a, a meeting and i want to you know so they're in the meeting and cotton ball um diamondback comes back comes in and just kills everybody but domingo yeah and, and her and dillard and tells her you're gonna go to the council and you're gonna um sell them these guns so he ends these up bullets. getting that done the bullets um so he ends up getting the bullets and what he's done is he's m found a way to mass produce judas bullets he's like They'll be less less effective because it's a smaller quantity. Yeah, it's like a five five six rounder. Right, two, two, three. but but he's like when you're firing a hundred of these bullets at someone, he's like yeah. they'll get the job done. So he arms like the SWAT team with those bullets. That's his whole thing. So but so Diamondback. So that's his. Those are his motivations. And um, his fucking suit at the end. Yes, you didn't like it, but I like the like. Yeah, it was it was it, was it was it was very very similar to the one he wears in the comic yes which is like this turtleneck thing but dude it just didn't work the helmet it, looked it dumb. looked weird but it looked it dumb the power source the, the power okay so the whole fight scene at the end you know what let's save that let's save that let's we'll save that when we we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that at the end we'll, we'll we'll get that at the end um so that's so diamondback so that's his thing you know he just wants no. to fucking kill you know he does have this hammer tech which is interesting because it's it's basically like he has a hammer because he has this tech where he can it's a it's a powered gauntlet where he can punch through shit, you know, and like punch yeah. as hard as Luke Cage. So, um, and it's from Hammer Technology. So, you know, so he's he's basically just pulling all this Hammer shit into the into the mix. Um, all right, let's let's move on to Black Mariah Dillard. Um, you in the comics, she's a big woman. Yeah. She's a real big woman. Um, obviously, they didn't do that, but um, Alfie Woodard, fuck man, just just killing it. Yeah killing it the whole time um i legitimately hated the character like, yeah she I was, was an hoping asshole. she would die at some point yeah she was a, played wonderfully though yeah acted wonderfully we're, when we say we hated these people we're not talking the actors it's just it's safe to say that all the actors just acted the shit out of their yeah. roles every time she was on screen like it was just like little ticks or something she did the way she carried herself on there it was like a person that you knew you'd hate yeah and that self-serving yeah. piece of shit yeah you could um, tell she was all about herself and bettering herself while putting on a facade about caring about the community exactly and her the scenes with her and um cornell cotton balls yeah I'm, i love them i love them i love them. normally i'm not into those things those in those expositional interim scenes yeah I, but I really loved them. Like there wasn't really any portion of this series that I was like, oh, I don't really care about this right now. You know, she, they did wonderfully. And again, the acting was top notch because it was like it wasn't. None of them were too preachy. None of them were too whiny, no. except maybe Cotton Balls. But um, let's just talk about how. OK, so growing up. her aunt, They lived with their aunt and uncle. The uncle Pete. Was it Pete? I think. I think it was Pete. I want to say Pete. it was Pete. Uh, yeah, because he's. Uh, I think uh, Cotton Mouth says. Uh, <laughs> you almost got me to say Cotton Balls. I know. Uh, I think he says. I saw how you'd walk around prancing around for Uncle Pete. I think that's what he said because that sounds right. In and my that's head. and that's what I want to bring up is that the fact that Uncle Pete basically molested her. Yeah. And so that's why, the Aunt Mabel sent her away to get for her to get an education and stuff like that because she knew that was happening and so yeah. um so the so here's so the, uh, you know there's the scene where she kills her cousin because he's a, he accuses her of and i want to talk about it later which is why i'm not getting into it right now yeah he accuses her of inviting it and liking it and she fucking basically knocks I him out i did the, not 
Yeah, she knocks him out the window and ends up killing him. So we'll get back to that in a second. So let's just move on to the last guy that I want to talk about is Shades. Yes. Fucking Shades. Good character overall. Great fucking character. I was Um, actually excited every time I saw him on the screen. Yeah, because he was such a... he, He was such... A, an amazing supporting role and you had said it to me yesterday um when you know when we were recording our other stuff last night you were saying how he showed up and he was always there to fucking back give whoever was there backup whether it be cotton balls or diamond back and he was a man who knew how to get things done yep. um and okay this is really cool because shades in the comic has sometimes has a visor like cyclops that shoots a yeah. laser beam didn't have any of that, but he's also like a crazy fighter too. And yeah. every time he's on the scene, dude, I was like, oh my God, what's he going to do? Is he, is he going to, oh, okay. Oh, is he going to fight someone? Is he going to, oh, he's getting mad. What's he going to do? I, I didn't, absolutely love that about no, him in that yeah. elevator scene. Yeah. And I didn't, you didn't know he was so well done. That fucking smile, you know, I'd give that, yeah. you know, like I know it, everything and you know nothing. Somewhat charming, but somewhat cocky. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but he, like he knew everything though. Like he knew what the, he had information that no one else had and you wanted it, but he wasn't going to give it to you. So, um, what do you hear? Anything? No, no, it's not. Okay. Um, yeah. So great fucking great character. Um, and there were a bunch of other characters, uh, scarf and, um, squabbles and squabbles in, in the prison. Um, but these are just the main characters that we want to talk about. Um, just, yeah. just amazing. Um, I, just to move this forward, I guess we'll we'll move forward. I mean, we could talk about these guys all day. I mean, there's tons Forever. of shit that I'd want to talk about. But, Thirteen episodes worth of stuff. Yeah, I mean, but you know, you know, and we decided to do it as all as one big episode, one big video, just because we'd be one releasing done. videos for a month. Otherwise. Yeah, one and done. Let it be done. You know, hear what we have to say. You know, give us your comments, what you think. Talk, we'll talk about it, and then go see for yourself. Um, why don't we move on to? Um, let's get in a little. Let's get into a little bit of the uh, music. I mean, we talked. Yeah. I think. I mean, we, we I talked, think we talked about, about that the music. Yeah, we. Yeah, I was. It's on my list here, but I think we talked about that. Why don't yeah. we move into? Um, the, the references and throwbacks, maybe. Yeah, let's let's let's. Well, first, let's do favorite moments. How about that? Let's run into some favorite okay. mo- favorite yeah. moments. Um, uh, I'll, I'll go I'll, since I talked about it just before. I'll get back into the, the where she kills Cotton Balls. Yes. Um, specifically, what happens? He accuses her of, like you said, prancing around and wearing all this and that, and she's and he's like, "You liked it. You invited it." And she's like, "I did not. I did not." Hits him over the head with the back with the with the with the wine bottle. Yeah. Falls out the fucking thing. He crawls away. She comes down and just so angry, so pissed, and takes a fucking heavy ass mic stand, stand and blasts him and blasts him and blasts him. So that was just fucking what a fucking crazy moment, man. It was it was unexpected. Yeah, very unexpected. Because I'm expecting this whole. I'm expecting. Okay, you know he. Luke's been fighting cotton balls the whole fucking first half, and you're like, he, oh, and they're going, and they're literally in the same room. They're at Pop's funeral. Yep. Um, the tension's like high. You can, you can feel it yeah. through the screen. Oh the yeah. The tension. Yeah. Hey, did we mention that Pop got killed? Did we? Yeah, we mentioned did it a few that? times. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think. We, yeah. We just didn't really get. We into didn't say specifics. how. Yeah. But yeah. Um, if you want to know how he gets killed, because. He's hiding Chico again. Chico has the has some of Cotton Ball's money, and and they find out. So uh, Cotton Ball's one of his like um, one of his right hand men find out where he is. He's at the barbershop. He goes in there with Shades, and Shades says, "Don't fucking. What are you gonna do?" He's like, "Don't worry about. It. I'm gonna." He's like, "Don't don't do don't do anything stupid. Let's just let him come out, and we'll get him." No, and no, no. I got this. The parlay. Yeah, it was supposed. Yeah, so he breaks the parlay and fucking decimates the barbershop, and that's what destroys the barbershop in the first place, killing Pop, hurting uh, hurting Chico. Yep. Luke Cage saves a little boy by, you know, covering him. And that's how Misty kind of finds Who out. Who plays an important part later, too. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, that scene was just, uh, where she kills him was just was just one of my favorite fucking scenes, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, what do you got? Anytime that Pop was on the scene, like, in that first episode, uh, first two episodes, I think. But everything between him and Luke was amazing. But I have to say that the elevator scene with uh, Shades was probably my best. Because you didn't know if he was going to die. And if you cared about him. And he was like, oh, well, because I believe Theo Rossi even says he's kind of like Peter Baelish, a little finger. Yeah, Theo Rossi is uh, Shades. Yeah. Uh, He says, yeah, my character is kind of like Littlefinger from Game of Thrones. Yeah. And uh, it's true because he plays each part. And then when he gets like that... uh, Garrett around his neck 
you don't know if he's going to die or not. But then he pulls the gun, shoots the guys like four times each, and then takes, um, God, what was his name? Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't Turk. Was it Zip? Zip, yeah. Zip, yeah. Uh, takes Zip up to the roof and just shoots him. It, it, it's just perfect. Yeah. It, it's not a spectacular, flashy scene. It's just something that's simple and to the point. Yeah, that was, that was definitely uh, an amazing scene. I, um... And that was that. That's that's indicative of his show. Yeah, it's it's all to the point. There wasn't huge speeches. It wasn't this. Like just they just got on with it. Even the funeral scene, like with the speeches, was not just speeches. It was, yeah. yeah. It was it Back was de- yeah. That was another good scene. That that's that, that. I'll add that to my list. Um, another awesome moment was the rocket into the building. Oh, dude, that was that scary. CGI. That was, was like one of the first good. big scenes. Was that was I was like, oh, I was like, damn but it. Before that's that, amazing. that fight scene where like. You can tell it's kind of oh Mortal yeah Kombat okay so let's talk CGI-ish. about that fight scene yeah he punches the face and like the arm breaks yeah um yeah I think we talked we talked we I think we've talked enough about the fight scenes but yeah that's one specific yeah. fight scene where Zip and Sugar and a bunch of other guys they're they're trying to hustle the money out of uh, Luke Cage's landlord um, and he shows up and he and he's just like I ain't having it and he yeah. fucking punches him and is yeah the for the wrist, Harlem Renaissance right. Um, so, I mean, that was a really cool fight scene, you know, but again, he's just a lot of punching and throwing or getting punched and then throwing, you know, um, yeah, throws that one guy through the window Yeah. later on. And I'm so glad they did this because if you're that fucking strong, you could easily just tap someone on the head and that's what he yeah. does. He just bop, bop, bop. He would just like, uh, the scene with method, with method man. I like that scene. He goes into, yes. he's trying to, he's on the run. Okay, and he walks into this convenience store. No, he sees two guys, armed guys, run into a convenience store, and he's like, damn it. Yep. Goes in there. Method Man's there with the owner. He just walks in and taps these fucking dudes on the head. And he's like, oh, shit. You know, like, that's what yeah, you would that do. Like, guy goes- <laughs> that's great. That's great. But, and I have something to say about that later. Um, uh, another, another one I wanted to uh, talk about was... Um, uh oh getting shot the sh- the scene where he actually gets shot yes that i was like oh no i didn't expect like, the bullet to like, penetrate him shit yeah that was that was pretty crazy though um so that like, was i was a- thinking the whole time he was selling him to diamondback like saying yeah this bullet will work i was thinking how do you know that yeah yeah exactly i mean and it's a little like all right because uh, it's an alien tech like yeah um Let's just briefly talk about the science behind Luke Cage. So Luke yes. Cage is created this way. And, and I, we're kind of jumping all over the place, but whatever. Luke Cage is basically created because they're, they're, it's a, a branch of or uh, an offshoot of the uh, serum that created Captain America. Yeah. Um, but really, and his name is uh, Bernstein, is... Um, the doctor who did it, who's yeah. also from the from the, I think I'm saying that right, Ber- Bernstein, I think. I, I think so. From I, from the comic, he's the guy that did it in the comic as well. Yeah. Um, he's but it really wasn't to make him a super soldier. It was it was healing. It was it was to introduce a healing factor in the subjects. And obviously they picked Luke Cage because he was a, a survivor and he was a big surviving su- fighter. So. Yeah. Um. But the Rackham, the guard that his like nemesis in prison, decides, well, fuck this guy, I'm gonna kill him turns up the fucking dial and what happens is his skin and all his organs all his cells decide to do like what a a type of a shellfish type thing where they they overlap and they just become so dense like flexible but dense yeah that they can basically they're impenetrable by normal means so that's and he's so he's got healing power and it's also strengthened his muscles so he has this human you know superhuman strength and um yeah so they they that's basic science behind it. Um, you yeah. know, and then back in, and then, like I said, towards the back end of the season, the season gets a little wonky where when he gets shot, they have to put him in this acid bath. They were like, Oh, we'll try this acid bath. That'll work. That didn't work. Oh, yeah, we'll, turn up the acidity. We'll turn it up. It. And then, Oh, but well, then we're going to throw some more of this to level out the pH. And then, and then we'll do this. And then he dies. And to bring him back to life, she throws a fucking, basically a toaster in there. <laughs> it was a, uh, it was a stove top, a uh, portable camper. Yeah. Stove. Yeah. And I'm like, Okay. All right. It got a little. That was a little comedic. It got a little. It got a little like, all right, you know. Uh, and I think he, 
what was he saying? Because they eventually figure out, hey, turn up the heat. Yeah. And um, what was it? She said something, uh, uh, I'm going to turn up the heat. And she goes to turn it up. He's like, what kind of scientist would I be if I let you screw it up yourself or something like that? He goes, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, it, was, that was, it was a little bit of comedy, but it was perfect. Like, yeah. I was laughing about that uh, pretty much the rest of the day. Yeah. A lot of these, a lot of these, um, a lot, a lot of it was pretty done pretty damn well. Like, they didn't do too much love stuff. They didn't do too much of high horse stuff, soapbox stuff. Yeah. They didn't do a whole lot, a lot of that. And and I at least I never – and I binge watched it. Jesse, you watched it even more than – I watched it in one day. You Yeah, you literally watched it one day. I watched it over three different sittings. Um, but it was like it was like a six-hour sitting and then a five-hour sitting yeah. and then like the last like episode, you know? Yeah. Um, we had, I'd say, probably 30 minutes worth of love stuff. I mean, you got the sex scene in the beginning and then all the stuff between Luke and Clara. Yeah. Not not, not a crazy amount of, of that type of stuff, but just really, really cool. Yeah. Um, shoot, dude, there's, like, there's a lot we could talk about, but I think... Um, uh, Let's just say one last thing, which yeah. is that it's not all set in night at alleys. Or at night Oh, at yeah, alleys. yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is the first Marvel series on Netflix that is not all set at fucking three quarters of it set at night in an alley. Yeah. Right. Um, which was great. You know, they really they really showcased Harlem and like, um, you know, and it's funny because, yeah. you know, Angie's my wife is, is from Queens, you know, and um, I've I've visited the city. I'm, I'm only I've always lived an hour out the city. So New York City. So I've been like, it's all, it's not old hat, but it's from, it's so familiar to me. Like I literally know my way around the city. I come out of Madison Square Garden, which is Penn Station, which is where most of the, all the trains pretty, pretty much go either that of Grand Central, but we usually go out of Madison Square and it's like, which is on, on top of Penn Station. You come out of Penn, I know where I'm going. I know which way the roads go. I know where this is. I know how to get to Times Square and I know how to make it down to Canal Street. Like I know uptown, downtown. I mean, she knows better than I do, but so we're very familiar. And it's just interesting because I wonder like people that have never been here or there or anything. And they look at that and they're like, wow, that's kind of crazy. I mean, people that live in like Chicago or Detroit, they, they see it, you know, or, or I don't know what Atlanta looks like. I don't know. Um, if it looks like that or all over the place, you know what I mean? But it's like, so people who don't live in these big cities, it's like, I wonder what like people like think of it. Like, holy shit, is that what it's really like? And the answer is yes. Like that shit that you see, like sex in the city, like all those shows that showcase all that shit. Yeah. That's what it's like. And it's really cool. Well, but, like I'm from Orlando, I've seen stuff like that, and uh, I can picture uh, that backdrop, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's definitely it. Yeah, yeah. If you guys ever get a chance to come up, come up to New York, and uh, just you know, go to Times Square and then Broadway and off. It's just it's so cool. Like, um, and my brother lives uh, in uh, the edge of Queens, just just over the bridge outside uh, outside of the city, and his like his vista is. Um, the city skyline like he lit his building is literally right at the water and it's like looks out and it's like you know and even back there like all into queens and stuff like that it's like you know this you know the urban neighborhoods and it's just it's cool it's like that you know it's very different you know than like say venice you know you watch a show like flaked on netflix um and it's like that's i don't know i don't know venice i've been to venice but i don't i haven't lived there so it's like for me that's like that's what that's like for me like oh wow it's really like that over there like everyone's really like that like it's just it's, it's just it's interesting so um why don't we get into a little bit uh some throwbacks slash references why don't why don't why don't we just do that a little bit um i want to let's do let's let's do some right. couple throwbacks to the actual other things so we've got references to matt murdoch in the show and frank castle frank castle so and jessica jones and jessica jones so um We've got a whole bunch of stuff. So, like, like the Frank Castle is when, at one point, they say, you know, what are we talking about? Like the Judas bullets. He's like, you know, we don't need them getting out on the street. He's like, we got a guy in in Hell's Kitchen. Frank who, Castle did enough damage with regular right, bullets. Right, and that, like yeah, that. he's yeah, with regular bullets, and we don't need people running around with that. And that was the uh, the is he is he DA or ADA? I thought he was the ADA. Uh, oh, he became DA. Defense attorney, but didn't he become the DA though? After in he Jessica Jones, have. I think he became the DA. But I thought they said he was the ADA. What I is the ADA he doing here? Because the DA got fucking killed. Remember? Well, I think uh, they haven't elected or let him take. No, the whatever. DA it's the dude office. that played the ADA in, in Jessica yeah. Jones. He shows up. I'm um, talking about Frank Castle and um, Claire Night Night Nurse. 
you know, mentions Matt Murdock, not by name, but she, three different times she mentions. I know a good uh, lawyer. I have a lawyer friend. I have a lawyer friend. And finally, at the end, he's she's like, I, I have a good lawyer. He's like, okay, fine. God damn it, shut up. Yeah. <coughs> I'm like, sorry, cough right into the mic. I'm so sorry. Um, probably not cutting that out. Yeah. Um, and uh, what else? Uh, Jessica Jones uh, mentioned a couple times that she shot. Yeah him in the under the chin he gets put the bullet the shotgun and that's what pop said you know he's she's yeah. like oh yeah uh, under mariah the chin. says uh oh there's a woman that's right yeah there's a woman that snapped the guy's neck all oh, because he mind controlled her yeah so you know uh so yeah so so we got those cute little references in there um we've got uh so we talked about the outfits uh so luke's outfit after he escapes and he makes his way across the water and he's in yeah. someone's backyard and he's got that tiara. He's got the, the bracers, the chain, and um, he gets that, that yellow blouse. <laughs> he, and yeah. Those pants. Or was it a blouse or was it a jacket? I thought it was a hoodie. No, it's literally, it, it's basically a blouse. It's wow. just an open, it's an open shirt, but it looks yeah. like a woman's blouse, dude. It's like, yeah, it's a billowy, flowing 70s feel to it, you know? So yeah. um, I call it a blouse. But And he, he had like, not real big hair, but somewhat big hair, yeah. uh, moderately, and then he had a bushy beard. Yeah, can we just talk about that for one second, dude? When he was in prison and he stopped, and like they did some close ups, like right before they put him in the chamber and stuff, I was like, that just looks fucking ridiculous. <laughs> like, he it just does. Looked, he looked ridiculous. Like, you really couldn't make it look a little better than that. Like, he just looked like a big, like, puff face. It was so weird. It was like, it didn't fit his it just face. Didn't, it didn't, but it didn't look, it didn't look legit. You know, obviously that's what would happen. You know, uh, I, I had, uh, I used to work with a dude who was like, he didn't want to shave his, his beard or his hair. And, you know, he, and he was a black dude, he didn't, but he didn't want to. He's like, I'm not going to shave anything. I'm like, all right, dude, whatever. You know, he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to dread everything. I'm going to do all this, but he didn't fucking, do, and it was like that, but it, it looked way better than fucking Luke Cage did. Like that just looks so fake to me, you know? Yeah. So a little bit of a fail there in my book, but um, so yeah, so we got the tiara and he looks himself in the mirror. He's like, oh hell no! And he takes the fucking thing off and you know. Uh, so we got that. Uh, Misty shows up in more or less her costume at the end of the uh, one of the last scenes. She shows up back in the club wearing yeah. her thing with her the, the her throwed out hair and everything. That looked pretty cool. Um, I am upset that they're not you know that they didn't do they that shot in the arm was like maybe a throwback I guess. I don't know. I think so. I really wish they, I, I don't see why they wouldn't give her a bionic arm. Just fucking do it. Whatever. Um, and Diamondback. We talked about it before, yeah. but his fucking suit's ridiculous. Here's <laughs> what I, like I, I want to say about that, okay? This goes back to how Luke can just tap someone on the head and knock him out. Why did he not rip the helmet off? He had plenty of opportunities. Take off fucking Willis's helmet, tap yeah. him on the head. Or... They showed the fucking power source in the back like six times. I was thinking that. Why not punch it? Why not punch it or take it and rip it up? Like, really? Really? No, they, no. To, to drive this, they did a, All right, here's the one thing they did do, and mostly at the, towards the middle to the end, okay? Yeah. They did things just to move the story forward. Again, this is another series. We didn't need 13 episodes. Maybe 10, probably eight, and we would have been <laughs> fine. I'm serious, dude. They didn't need 13 fucking episodes, especially after Cotton Balls got fucking taken out. The the stuff with Diamondback could have been like three or four episodes. This really didn't need to be that. Anyway, nah. I digress. They just, they tried to push it forward. They did the whole thing where he's going to, look, the fight out in the street, I love that. I kind of love that. Yeah. I always love the concept of, that a showcase like that where you have two people duking it out. When I used to write stories when I was younger, I used to do the same shit. I used to set stories, my characters in like, literally like I'd send them like at the Oscars and now they're fighting literally on the stage at the Oscars. Yeah. Because it's just, I just love that whole, all these people are watching these yeah, two, just three, an four audience people. Yeah, I just like fight. that, you know? Um, and so that was cool. I didn't mind that. A couple of funny things, you know, where he's like, oh, we just talked about your mom. You know, like there were some yeah. funny things with that. But then again, even so, they're just letting them fucking fight. Like, yeah, pretty much. Like the cops are all standing there. Like, why? Well, because they the cops... even said, hold on. I want to see how this plays out. I know. I mean, but it was a little like, all right, someone could have done something. And so they, again, my, my whole point is that to push the story forward or intertwine their, their backstory is that he was training him when he was younger and yep. he fought him and this is and he just lets him fight him so he gets tired and then he puts him down like it's just it was well, it was dumb 
it was we didn't good. talk about it, but his uh, fighting, like his more refined fighting, came from the military where he was forced to go after committing GTA. Good point. Yep. So his dad said, and that was the other thing that, uh, that's another reason why Willis was all pissed off because Willis got in trouble and stayed home in trouble where their dad sent uh, Luke well, away. He went to juvie. Oh, he went to juvie. Had right, to well, kill a guy and yeah. then got sent to prison. And got, right. And so, and that's, and then, so, but Luke got sent to, uh, you know, the army and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's like, uh, you know, back, that backstory is fine. But again, that whole fight yeah. just, come on, man. Like yeah. it, if they, uh, if, if they had just, if he had literally just decimated him. Yeah, but that wouldn't have made for. I would have been if it was like he if it was like say like 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 in five like after like two or three minutes he was like all right you know what helmet off boom you're done yeah that would have been fine because he's he's hurting Luke here's what pissed me off about that okay so you have someone as strong as Luke so you're telling me that because of that so that that strength was enough to damage Luke even though he's invulnerable so yeah. that was enough strength okay great I guess right. I guess. Uh, well, uh, it's kind of like uh, only he who is as strong as himself can hurt himself or something like that. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Again. It, a it, lot of biblical references in there, and I yeah, believe true. that is in the Bible yeah. uh, at one point. Sounds like it. We'll, we'll say yeah. Um, but if not, yeah. it's an old proverb. <laughs> <laughs> it was it, it, a, li- a little wonky at the end, towards yeah. the end. A little wonky. Um, it ended, eh, Let's let's end, let's wrap this up. I mean, we've gone longer than I wanted to, and I'm not editing this down. I mean, so yeah, yeah. I just I want to list off a few songs here that you will absolutely love if you uh, watched it. I have wrote them down actually. Wait, wait, don't do that. We'll end end on that. Let's all just right. talk about the the very end, where all of a sudden everyone's hunky dory. Everyone's fine. He's fine. Um, uh, Misty's fine. Her arm is fine. She's not even in a sling. It's fine. Everything's fine. Oh, I'll get you a lawyer. Oh, uh, sorry, we didn't believe you. Blah blah blah. But you know, Mariah gets off, and oh, I'm gonna. You're, I hate you. And they killed the girl, and yeah. uh, it, and then and then they the, the, the marshals come, and he's like, okay, I'm ready to go. Like, oh god. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was, and then and then Fish uh, finds. And the then you know, file. and that was fine, and that was fine. But it was like, it was a little, it was a little lackluster. Yeah. To me, you know, it was it. I don't know. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't sit well with me. Um, again, fine, but it. I. I think. Yeah. I. I don't know. Whatever. It is what it is. But yeah. I. I. Just, whatever. So, anyway. All right. So, guys, let's just end with some. Um, with, uh, Jess is going to give you some some good shit here. All right. So, uh, like most of these were played in the club. Uh, first off on the list, I have um, from Isaac Hayes' "Walk On By." That was a real good song in there. Uh, you also have Good Man by uh, Raphael Siddiq. Uh, I mentioned him earlier. Siddiq, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and you have uh, Ain't It a Sin by Charles Bradley. And those are three of the best songs that I found in this show. Yeah, they were pretty damn good. Yeah. And and, and obviously there were some there were some other ones. One of my Yeah, favorite... there was a ton of other ones, but those three were the standout ones. Yeah, one of my favorite um, musical-related things about it was at one point when the three older guys, I don't know the band... But um, they're practicing. Before. Yeah, the stop look and all that. Yeah, yeah they're practicing, and he's like, ah, stop, 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 and he's like, yells at like the drummer or something. Yeah. Right. And then, um, and then like later on, you know, you see them, they're doing their thing. And I thought that was kind of funny, I like that. Um, all right, uh, Jess, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, I think we covered. I think, it. I mean, you know, I mean, there's still, I mean, 13 episodes, a whole season. You know, I know we kind of jumped around a little bit here and there, but who gives a shit, whatever. Yeah. Um, if you enjoyed the show. Let us know. Let us know your thoughts about all these things. Uh, please check us out on um, all the stuff you see there at the bottom of the screen at Third Person on SoundCloud. If you're on, well, obviously we're on YouTube already. Check out a Third Person Pod, um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Tumblr. Uh, no, no, Tumblr. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and did I do Tumblr? Oh, there's a Tumblr there. Shit. Yeah, there is a Tumblr. I should probably take that off. We don't have a Tumblr right now. Anyway, um, never mind. I didn't say that. Uh, but yeah, so uh, let us know. Leave some comments and uh, go check out. Uh, we just finished off uh, Fear of the Walking Dead. Um, again, if you're watching this later, 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 whatever, go check out our Fear of the Walking Dead stuff. Uh, we yeah. have Walking Dead at the, you know, probably if the Walking Dead is on the channel by now if you're watching this later on. Uh, our Westworld series that we're doing too. And um, yeah, it's a lot of good stuff here. We're growing the channel. We appreciate everyone's uh, support, everyone's love, everyone's comments. And um, yeah, I guess that's it, right? Yeah, uh, I just did a little bit of research here. It was the Delphonics Stop and Look. 
There it is. Okay, yeah, the Delphonics. Yeah. Uh, and there you go. So, um, all right, guys, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate it. And um, yeah, that's it. So we're done. Peace out. All right.